teleworking is, uh, you know, one of the skills, one of the ways, and surely, uh, you know, it can be learned and it can be taught, it can be practiced and improved. But indeed, we need to unlearn certain things. And I believe that one core element that I witness quite often is dominant when it comes to public administration, but also in the private sector in very hierarchical, bureaucratic organizations, that it's a question of control. When we are telecommuting, teleworking, we really must give away the control to people. We must empower every single team member, every single person who used to work as an expert to be able to jump into a role of a leader, to think as if she or he were a leader. And I believe that this is very hard to do because people, you know, uh, are seeking security. Uh, they are seeking a sense of belonging. Uh, quite often they value a sense of community. And suddenly um, we do not have the opportunity for exchange of information in an informal way, uh, but also we cannot keep up simply and make people deliver as we used to through the regular team meetings face to face when many things that would go um, unattended, unexpected, simply, uh, you know, are voiced. So when we learn about how teams work in diverse organizations. I see many um, team dysfunctions um, emerge. And one of them is the question of leadership. And how do you execute leadership? Is the person who is heading the department responsible for being the leader? Is the head of a team the leader? Or is every single person? And by the way, what does this mean to be a leader in a virtual organization? So my question I ask is, it's just a skill, it can be learned, but what kind of leadership do you need if you're a public administration? When I look today how governments behave, uh, they were very efficient in delivering fast, on time, um, the straight uh, help to support the most vulnerable over the pandemic. Uh, people were given money, uh, people were giving support. Everyone sensed that there was a, a community to deliver uh, a safety net that we all need to become a part of. But I agree that protect is the necessary short-term policy. But how about the midterm and the long-term? In the paper that uh, we as the expert group to um, European Commission published last year on the post-COVID recovery strategies, uh, we advocated that governments need to protect, but also need to prepare and need to transform. And I would say that this remote work makes this challenge even more difficult for governments because the systems may be in place, but how do you prepare the society and the public administration for the future shocks? But most importantly, how do you innovate when teleworking to prepare the public administration for to transform itself? The future of work in the post-corona world is not predictable because there are so many interdependencies that it's really impossible to extrapolate the trends towards the future. The only trend that we know that the speed of changes will accelerate. Now we also can draw conclusions how governments around the world behave. For example, what is the level of solidarity in the global um, citizenship, in the global community? To what extent are we building walls? But I think that the future of work also will open certain unexpected opportunities for individual workers. I think that assuming that as, as data shows over 40% of organizations will continue to have 40% um, of the workforce on some time of telework um, setup, I think that really the mobility will become a big future. Now, 
we are human and digital. So uh, what is important is that this physical connection matters. The public official needs to understand which are the right communities to, to map this ecosystem, to shape this ecosystem, and to build relations with the right people in these communities. The second is about being a networker. Working remotely, teleworking, requires much more attention to building the social tissue, the social system around us. And I think that it's not about networking, meaning that building, meeting more and more people, exchanging business cards, having more and more followers. No, I think that the networking aspect is really about being connected to the ecosystem, being engaged with people, with the right people in this ecosystem, and then empowering your team by helping them be better connected so that they can monitor market trends, monitor societal trends, that they can um, sell ideas, uh, that they can share resources, that they can build a brand uh, of a public institution for as a magnet for talent and for, for innovation. Then I believe that it's necessary uh, that people are orchestrators. I think that the importance of the implementation has never been stronger. Now, implementation before was about linear project management. Today, it's really about simultaneous juggling of many projects in which probably we have different roles. So it's about communication skills, about collaboration skills, digital communication and collaboration for diversity that we can orchestrate different projects at the same time. And finally, this dimension of influence. Now, people think, um, I don't need to be a leader. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to be an influencer. Now, I am challenging this because I believe that when we're in a shift to a new way of working, which will probably stay with us to some extent, in a hybrid organization, partly online, parking, partly face-to-face, -face, there will be many ruptures. And every single team member needs to be connected to the decision makers who are at the top of the of the organizational chart, but also to those informal influencers who can help keep track and keep the pulse of the organization, who can keep up the team performance, but foremost, who can build those muscles to prepare the public administration to serve the society for the future shocks, and then to transform itself, to reinvent itself to become the government of the future. Engagement is really a very hard thing to do if we need to do it fully online. Now, what happens with the online work that the creative talent, the innovative talent, quite often gets marginalized. This is because, you know, um, for efficiency, uh, but also for hard to spot team dysfunctions, the creative talent gets somehow marginalized from the mainstream communication networks. And I think that this is really a big risk for public administration. We should pay attention, how to protect the smart creatives, the disruptors, the entrepreneurial people already working in the public sector, because they are the future of the government. They should create this future of the government, or rather co-create this future across the silos. Indeed, I agree that as data shows, the innovative capacity of organizations is affected strongly by a simultaneous massive shift to online work. Now, why is that so? Uh, would we say that to be innovative, we always need to be in a team or are we still believing in this lonely genius? I think for me, innovation is really a learning. It's a collective learning process. And the more people we engage in this process, 
the faster is the feedback loop, so the faster we can accelerate and improve the innovation. Now, does this need to be done physically? Absolutely not. And I think there are amazing examples where smart creatives, people working digitally, can produce amazing solutions. But what is true is that there are definitely limitations in building trust between people. Now, I think trust is key for innovation because if you do not trust in the, another person, why would you share information? Why would you understand what this person needs? Now, when we speak about remote working, we speak about digital trust. And working with different teams also in Catalonia, in different organizations, we realized that building digital trust is really the skill that every single person should understand and should dedicate some time to. So it basically means that you have a digital identity that is as reliable, as trustworthy as your um, physical, social, cultural identity, but it's expressed on digital platforms through digital means. When you're virtually onboarding yourself to different meetings, uh, conferences, events. So it's important that people pay attention of who they are as digital humans. We do need to have governments and public administration change not only the structure, not only the policies and governance mechanisms, but also the leadership style and the culture of the government. Move away from the top down, from hierarchical, from closed, from silos to very much open, very much collaborative, very much innovative and foremost, very much entrepreneurial in how we come up with new solutions for a better future. I do believe that we leaped forward in terms of absorption of the digital tools. And let me be here very specific. Indeed, there was a big resistance to deploy digital solutions and we did phenomenal ways in private and public sectors, in educational sector, to suddenly move to using at a mass scale at the individual team and organizational level all sorts of digital solutions. What has not changed, however, and I say it very loudly and very openly, we have not leaped frog into the future with the way we think. We have not leaped frog with understanding that the complex problems very often are connected with this networked, intercorrelated, interrelated, simultaneously changing ecosystem, local and global. And to solve problems, we need to come up with new leadership skills. We need to come up with new visionary uh, leaders who can bring crowds around them towards a better future, towards better solutions, more sustainable, green. So it's not only about using digital tools, but foremost about building new leaders, new organizations, new communities and new networks that will be able to solve complex problems together. <laughs>